Hey everybody, how are you doing? It is Crystal and I am so happy to be with you here today in this video because I am having in this video a conscious conversation with my really good friend Berwyn Camp, also known as the Prophet BK. Now, Berwyn kind of grew up a little bit like I did in fundamentalist Christianity, super indoctrinated into the system. But over time, just like me, he found his way out of that system and began his own authentic path of spirituality. Now, Berwyn's spirituality is an intersection of mystical Christianity and also hoodoo. And I just, I didn't know too much about hoodoo. So I really just wanted Berwin to break it all down for us, which he does in this video. So I truly hope that you enjoy it. Before we get into it, I just want to remind you to please like, share, subscribe, and support this channel. It really does help me in the algorithm. And also, I really want to tell you that the Channeling Intensive, which is coming up on May 9th, 2022, it's a six-week live online program designed to directly put you in connection with your spirit guides, your higher self, with angels, masters, and more, and will teach you how to directly channel these beings. If you're interested in being a part of this beautiful program, we have an early registration discount until April 22nd. Link in the description. Most definitely check it out. I would love to see you there. Starts May 9th, which by the way, is my birthday. All right. Without any further ado, let's get into my conscious conversation with the wonderful Prophet BK. Well, anyway, let's get right into it. We're having a conversation once again with the lovely Prophet BK, also known as Berwyn Kemp. And we're having you back because we didn't quite get to the conversation about your transition from Christianity, we both have this in common, mm -hmm. into um, your own spiritual adventure, which landed you in your present spirituality, which is, is it voodoo or hoodoo? And what's the difference? Talk to us. <laughs> Let us know. Okay. So it is hoodoo. Hoodoo though and voodoo have a lot of the same principles. Only difference between hoodoo and voodoo is voodoo is actually a religion. So there's different voodoo practitioners. There's Haitian voodoo, which is straight from Haiti. Then there's Louisiana. It's more of a religion for them because they have... Uh, so what's funny is a lot of voodoo practitioners were raised Catholic. Hmm. And what they did was they used the Catholic saints to honor their African traditional deities through the colors that they wore. Oh, okay. So that's where the difference between hoodoo and voodoo is different because in hoodoo is ancestral. Uh, my best friend, she called it, I, we were just talking about it earlier. So I asked her what was her best definition of hoodoo. And she said, hoodoo is like church without the judgment. Oh, okay. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why even for me, um, when I began to practice it, it was freeing for me because it did not have the judgment. And you know, my story from before of all the judgment because of my sexuality, which is what led me to start looking for a spiritual path that was um, accepting of who I was, spirit, soul, and body. And with hoodoo, which was originally started, of course, in um, back, it started with the Atlantic slave trade when they were brought over here. And a lot of our practices had to be suppressed. So what did they do? They hid it in the church. <laughs> mm -hmm. So right. a lot of preachers at that day and time were conjurers, hoodoo workers, uh, root workers. Now, when you say hoodoo, that's like the umbrella, but under it, you have conjurers, which are people who deal more with conjuring of the spirits. You have root workers are people who uh, use roots, herbs, like my great grandmother and my great great aunt, Lily, were both, I consider them root workers because they dealt with making teas. They dealt with making potions to heal people. You know, if you had a rash or something, they knew to go out there, get this color dirt. Like they, it's all earth magic. They learned how to speak to the plants. The plants spoke to them and they were able to use it to heal themselves. So when we say that hoodoo is like church without judgment, hoodoo is about calling upon the spirits, which is most all religions do. They call upon the spirits of, or the deities that they honor or they represent. And it's so funny because I actually pulled up a class that you taught on God, then the angels, then the ancestors, then us. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So hoodoo is kind of the same way. Okay. God is overall. And even if you look in the Bible, I remember as a kid, I never understood why at the beginning, especially in the Old Testament, Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat, like, what, why are we going through these, all these who begat who? It was all ancestral. Even when, I think it was Elijah, when he prayed, he said, I call upon the God of Elisha. Everything was ancestral. It was everything about passing down the mantle, passing down the wisdom, passing down the knowledge and the information. So for me, when I began to learn about hoodoo, it was controversial because, you know, we, we use oils, we use herbs, which the church used. They used to put the oil on your forehead, lay hands okay. on your third eye. <laughs> yes, they did. They always used the right hand, which is what you give out energy. The left hand, you receive energy. So it was like... Um, it was easy for me to transition into practicing and understanding hoodoo because it's in our lineage. And as I began to understand the um, language, it was very, it's very churchy, but it was easy for me to understand. And it was already in my bloodline because mm-hmm. our ancestors are in our DNA. You know, we see all these people with these elaborate altars and I have an altar. I have two. I have one for my ancestors and I have one for my spirit guides. But at the end of the day, our heart is the altar. And our ancestors speak to us through our DNA. They three speak to us intuitively through our thoughts. Like yesterday, I was looking for this author. I read this book 30 years ago, and I wanted to read the book again. And as soon as I went to Google, Mark Vickler, just his name came straight to me. And I was like, how did I remember that? I, like, I haven't looked at this man's books and th- it spoke so cl- I was like, and I knew that wasn't just my memory. And when I went on to his site, he has actually updated the book that he wrote 20 years ago. So it's a revised edition. Oh, okay. So in this new edition, he's teaching how to intuitively heal your heart through scriptures, which is what Hulu is about. Healing, deliverance, protection through the scriptures. Our, our ancestors and our grandmothers used to take this Bible and they would go into these scriptures and they would conjure. They would call upon God. They would call upon the Holy Spirit, they will call upon their ancestors that transitioned for wisdom. Every home you went in, they had a Bible on the coffee table and it was always open to either Psalms 23 or Psalms 91. Mm-hmm. And then they usually had a wall with everybody's pictures. Oh, that's my great grandma. That's my great grand. You know, they may not have said it was an altar or they may not have said it was a shrine, but consciously, that's what it was. So in essence, that's what what hoodoo is. Is that is the Bible the only sacred text that? No, you can there... use the Torah, you can use the okay. Quran, whatever speaks to you. Like I said, it's ancestral. So if you were a Buddhist, there are herbs that they use from their their time, their land that would be considered a hoodoo practice for them because it's all about just connecting to your ancestral and your lineage and what worked for them and what helped them to excel. So you transitioned out of the structure and the system of Christianity and hoodoo just kind of was a really good fit because so much of that was familiar and also the DNA, the ancestry, that familiarity and the resonance from that. So how long have you been working in this area? Are you a conjurer or... Or do you work with the roots? What what would you classify? I, I work with them all. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I've been doing it all my life. Didn't realize it though. Um, as a matter of fact, me and a friend was talking the other day about um, because you know, um, I assist a young lady with three hoodoo sisters.com. And um, we were just talking about when we were growing up, Saturday mornings, you woke up and you heard gospel music playing, and you knew it was time to get up and clean the house. And I Look back on it now, and I'm like, I remember using the pine saw, not knowing that pine was considered a blessed plant that removed negative energy from the home. Oh, there you go. Oh, Murphy soil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is Murphy. Yeah. That is Murphy soil. I got. But this is the same. Um, this has lemongrass in it. Lemongrass is a herb that's used to break up energy. Pine is a blessed plant. It breaks up. It removes, but it also can draw in. So um, like when I make my blessed oils, I use um, pine essential oil, cinnamon for the sweetness, for the fire, olive oil, which is the base, which olive oil has always been a blessed plant. Kind of like in the scripture, it talks about purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. I shall be made whole. So we use hyssop to cleanse for spiritual baths. 
So I've been doing it all my life, but it never had that the context. Guy, you know, right. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started learning, I was like, I've been doing this all my life. And I specifically remember when we would get done cleaning the house on Saturdays, it literally felt clear. Mm -hmm. It felt clean. It smelled great. Like it was the it raised the vibration of the home. That's what it did. And it kind of reset the home too, energetically for the week to come. And then just right. keep you just keeping it moving through the days. Um, you mentioned is did you say three hoodoo sisters? Yeah. It, yeah. So I, I follow that Instagram account and I was just looking, I think it was last week at one of her tarot card readings from, I guess, January when she started talking a little bit about the war and mm -hmm. Putin and she was so prescient and accurate. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so, so you, you work with, you work with them or you work in their shop or what do, what yeah, do you I, do? Yeah. I'm her personal assistant. Okay. I'm like, a, um, what do you call it? An apprentice. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm the I'm the Virgo of the business. Okay, <laughs> I'm the I get it. Structure and the order. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so when when you moved from Christianity into is it Hoodooism or is it Hoodoo? Hoodoo. hoodoo? Mm -hmm. Into Hoodoo, and you're drawing upon the power and you're conjuring in a new different way. Is it still the same power Energy. in terms of Holy Spirit? It's not like a different feeling. It's still the same. The exact same. Actually, I will say this. Once I started my ancestral veneration, I noticed even my relationship with God became stronger. What it did different, I don't know. But even when I first began to do it, I would pray and I would say, I call upon the God of my ancestors because I knew that those that walk with you want your highest good. Those that walk with you want to see you fulfill your complete mission and fulfill your potential. Now, so do some of them have their own prejudices? Some of them still may have. So when I did it, I was clear when I called upon my ancestors of love and light. If you don't like gay folks, stay away. <laughs> no um, need to come. <laughs> no need to come. Keep your biases over there. Right. <laughs> Only come if it's an emergency. So do um, you think that ancestors can retain their biases or their limitations once they're in spirit? Or do they have a different vantage point, do you think? I think sometimes over time, as, the, as they're elevated, they do begin to see things from a more universal perspective. But when we die, we're soul and we still kind of have our, you know, our issues our, that we got to work out on the other side, which is why ancestral veneration and why hoodoo is such a powerful practice, because within hoodoo, it's a lot about elevating your ancestral bloodline, honoring them, but also elevating them on the other side mm. so that they can raise up to the higher vibration and the higher the vibration they raise to, the higher they're, they're able to help you get to where you're supposed to go. This is interesting because I've tried to intuitively heal my timeline and my ancestry because we have a lot of different karmic patterns that show up generation to generation. And my sense of it was when I went into the timeline and tried to heal some of the past that the ancestors actually became present with me. Like they're, they're like, oh, finally, <laughs> somebody's doing the work and yeah. I get, I get to be healed in this moment too. And that really did validate what you're saying, which is, you know, they're in the process of this elevation, but just because you die doesn't mean you're all, you're a saint, right? You're still a human right. personality. And so they're going through a process as well, which is why an ancestral work and timeline healing feels really powerful because you're really not alone. They show up mm. to help facilitate that. So I now I come, I consider myself a Christian mystic like Jesus. Yes, indeed. <laughs> which is, which is what the church was supposed to be doing in the first place, but that's a whole nother Correct. <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, I mean, even Jesus used earth energy. Remember in the scripture when he spit into the dirt and he took it and rubbed it on the man's eyes and he said, what do you see? <laughs> he was using earth. He was using right. the power of his words, the power of intention to heal this man's eyes. But he was also pushing the man to use his faith to see what he could see. That's what spirituality is all about. It's about using the Bible to speak life into your situation and your circumstance. And it just so happened that a lot of people are jaded or wounded by Christianity and by church. So they don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to talk about the Bible. But at the end of the day, it really, the Bible is a universal language. And then if you really begin to study it and you read it for yourself, um, there's a scripture in Daniel where they literally call Daniel the master magician. People get so stuck, don't they? So stuck in their little way of thinking. And it's like, it's right there in the book you call sacred. Yep. <laughs> So how did y'all call magic 
demonic and evil. But Daniel, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Y'all called him the man. As a matter of fact, that was the reason he ate a totally different diet. Because he was raised up under the school of magicians and they didn't eat meat. <laughs> I was right. like, I kind of got mad. <laughs> I know. Like, you you really realize how much you've been just listening to the pastor mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. the system, but you really yeah. haven't been picking up what's right in that book. I wanted to I wanted to tell you that um I don't know much about hoodoo or voodoo, but a friend had told me if I wanted to like raise some money quickly, I could work with Saint Expedite. And okay. so I got an Expedite candle, I got a little Expedite image, and I got the prayers and I worked with Expedite. And let me tell you something, it actually really worked quickly was <laughs> like I mean I, I I always try to go into it like believing that it's possible right and mm -hmm. believing that it'll be done but I was pretty amazed at how amplified and accelerated the process was working with expedite and I'm wondering if you have some other saints that you love to work with and if so who are they and what do how do you work with them what do they do I really don't work with other saints okay. um I do work with the energy of Jesus okay so you just you stay with Jesus I know a lot about the other ones, but I just stay in my lane. <laughs> okay. Like, me and him are already homeboys. So, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, yeah. So, for me, it's really about when I do um, any type of conjure or anything of that nature, I rely on my ancestors. I rely on the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, also Trinity. I also understand God as Mother God. So I call them the mother God energy. I got a lot of friends that do though. You know, they use different saints and, um, and I just haven't got there yet. <laughs> I just haven't got there well, yet. Maybe you're working with the most powerful one, <laughs> you know, but that, the, I, that's how you feel. <laughs> yeah. 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 I do, I do think that the energy was, was a little different. Like the energy, mm -hmm. I could tell a difference uh, between working with Expedite and just doing my regular manifestation stuff mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i i've been interested to learn a little bit more because i think it's again it's all under the umbrella it's just kind of working a technique in a different way and using a little right. bit of a different recipe if you will mm -hmm. to get the same result like but, um saint jude is good for healing um, i actually have some oh it's on my altar i have some saint jude oil from the catholic church physical healing or like any kind of healing healing period physical, emotional. I would say psychological, but sometimes some people don't need no St. Jude <laughs> psychological. They need the therapist. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Find a doctor. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it's kind of, when you say psychological healing, there's a, uh, this kind of a touchy thing because I really feel like some people use spirituality to kind of cover up the fact that they got some mental health issues. Most definitely. I think you find a lot of fringe personalities in religion and spirituality because they're trying to co-opt a system so they don't really have to deal with mm -hmm. what's happening inside of them. But so, yes, Jude, I know St. Jude, Jude is good for okay. physical healing. Um, and I do you, I work with the angels. Archangel Michael, when I'm doing clearing work. Raphael, also when it comes to... I you taught on that one, Raphael. I know, I know his name means God heals and he's, typ he's okay, typically he's, associated with healing. Yeah. Okay, it's another one. That brings the manifestation of the word. Oh, I want to know who that. Me. I want to know who that one is. <laughs> so yeah, I do uh, work with the angels. You know in what my saint prayers. I'm drawn to a saint, and I'm I'm not sure why. Well, I love Saint Francis. I've always loved Saint Francis. Yeah. And I love Joseph, who's a Catholic saint, the father of Jesus. You like? Yeah. I like Joseph. Joseph, I, I'd be curious to know if he's associated with any kind of magical process or or otherwise. But he's just such a manly, masculine figure but like not toxic masculinity but like what a man ought to be because right. here comes mary you know getting pregnant and he marries her anyway he raises jesus he teaches jesus his trade and he's just a good man and so i tend to call in joseph when i'm working with people who've had broken relationships with their father or in i was his... just about to say that yeah, yeah. he seems that, like he's... and he's also good um when it comes to business oh really yeah, because you know he was a carpenter. Yes. And he yes. actually taught Jesus. Right. So if, if you're dealing with anybody that may be trying to get wisdom for their personal business or their as an entrepreneur, you know, I will call upon him to get the wisdom on how to structure your business as well. Great. Okay. So really when you're dealing with the saints, you want to look at their attributes and what they did. I have a great aunt that follows me, um, great aunt Lily, 
and she was a business owner. She was an entrepreneur. She was a, a tarot reader. So sometimes when I do my readings, I pray and I ask God to give me clarity, light and understanding. I ask the Holy Spirit to take me to this place of truth. And I'm like, come on, Aunt Lily, I need your help. Right. <laughs> and I notice when I do that, my readings are totally different. Actually, the last time I did that which was about last Sunday. When the person got on the Zoom, I didn't even open up my card deck. Like it just boom. And I actually had to tell myself, hold on one second. And I got my pen and I just started writing. It was coming. It was just coming. It was coming. So when I got done writing, I said, I'm going to tell you what just came down. And I said, if you have any questions from that, I'll pull a card for you. When I got done reading the 10 points that they gave me, he was like, oh, you don't need to pull a card. You just answered everything that I needed. And I was I was kind of shocked. Like, I did? <laughs> <laughs> I need to call on you more often. Yes. I My mom is with me a lot in my work. She helps facilitate everything. I see a lot of people um, that understand the, the ancestral realm is here to help you, to push you, to encourage you. I think people will be more open to being receptive to it. One more Bible verse. In the Hebrews, it talks about your great cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. You know, they go through the hall of faith with Sarah and Abram. And then it gets to the part and it talks about the great cloud of witnesses. And I remember thinking, well, I don't know Abraham. I don't know Sarah. So they can't be who's in my cloud of witnesses. And the more I kept studying it and sitting with it, it started making sense. I was like, oh, wait a minute. They're talking about my ancestors. That makes sense. It's all in the Bible, too. <laughs> Let me ask you a question because I'm wondering, I'm sure you probably had to deal with this. And I hear from a lot of students about this, people who came up through Christianity mm -hmm. and were indoctrinated in that system. And they're trying to get out. They're trying to explore their own intuition or other systems of spirituality. And they're just afraid of being wrong. You know, like Doreen Virtue, for example, she had this obviously huge presence as an angel channel and all of her cards. And now she's back to fundamentalist Christianity, kind of in this fear position and denouncing everything she's ever done before. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if it's because she never really believed fully that it was real or possible. So I'm wondering if you ever had to deal with, well, what happens if I die? And I have to go stand before the Bema seat or whatever, or I have to meet Jesus. And I was wrong or I did it wrong. Have you ever worried about that? Do you ever have any fear about that? Because a lot of people actually do. How, you never did. You know why I say I, I don't? Because I feel intuitively I know it's right. Mm -hmm. When I started this journey, which is why I even like my mom, the stuff I get into, my mom's she be like, what's this? What's that? And I explained it to her. She's just like, oh, okay. Because my mama is the Bible all day. <laughs> all day. Is it in the Bible? I'd be like, yeah, mom, it's in the Bible. Okay. You know, she, as long as it's scriptural. But because of my foundation, which I will always love, my Christian foundation, because it grounded me in the energy and the vibration of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of truth. So even when I started my spiritual journey, I would always say, Holy Spirit, do not let me get off track. <laughs> Don't let me get into something that's just going to be all out there. Woo -woo. And there are things that, you know, I hear taught and I hear people talk about that I could just in my spirit, it just don't resonate. And I get a, uh, that's not for me. You know, like I heard someone once saying something about necromancy and how um, you can command the dead to do what you want them to do. And I'm just like, let them rest. <laughs> Why would you Why want would to you do, want that? do that? Right. You know, so, you know, it's like God lives in us. Our path is our path. We cannot go wrong. Now, will we steer off and maybe be lazy sometimes? Will we steer off and, you know, do our own thing and the spirit got to bring us back? No, this is the path we supposed to be on. Yes. But being wrong, I really believe at the end of the day, the God consciousness that lives and resides in us, that created everything from time, space, and eternity, there is no right or wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that also feels light. It feels good. And I even think with Doreen's situation, intuitively, I feel like she went back to what was safe for her because she may have had some situations that came along that shook her faith and what she was believing. And it made her feel like, well, let me go back to what's safe. What I don't like is the dogmatic like if that's judgment. You, and and yeah, now, that's what you now, feel. You're, now you're judging people yeah. again. Yeah. Right. If that's what you feel, hey, I'm not against it. Just don't tell me I'm wrong for doing what I do. 
Especially I mean, when you made millions of dollars off a lot of people. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And I think continues to make money off of her Oracle cards, although she took her name off them. But I mean, I could be wrong. I do have a question for you because, you know, mm -hmm. I love that you love scripture. So bl blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I remember mm -hmm. as a teenager, like, oh, let me never accidentally blaspheme the Holy Spirit because there's no redemption if you, right? Like if you uh -huh. do that just once, it's done. It's done. So you're going to hell. Can a person, what do you think blaspheming the Holy Spirit is? And can a person do that inadvertently? Did you ever think about that? You know, that's a good question. Now, I, I have heard um, blaspheming the Holy Spirit is basically denying his presence in your life. Well, don't people Which, do that every day, though? And that's why I'm about to say that we also have to understand when it comes to scriptures, scriptures were written by Constantine in their day to control the consciousness of people. Because, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, well, the Bible says man shall not lie with man. OK, well, the original text says man shall not lie with boy. It was speaking against pedophilia. Mm -hmm. But then when they're African-American and they get, try to beat me with their scripture. I said, well, let's go back to Exodus where it says, uh, slaves obey your master. So you need to go back into slavery. That's what the Bible says. So when you talk about the scriptures, you have to understand the context, what was happening at the time it was written, why it was written and who it was written for. Even the scripture about man lie, not lying with man, that was in Leviticus. That was because the people at that time were dealing with a lot of pedophilia, incest, bestiality, and the city had just got attacked and they were trying to repopulate the city. So in the original, there's two original texts. One text says man should not lie with man. Then there's another text in Leviticus where it talks about um, homosexuality. It didn't say homosexuality, but it says it's not good for man to lie with man now because they needed the men to sleep with the women so they could get pregnant to repopulate the city. Is there any mention of homosexuality or a reference to it in the New Testament, like Paul or one of those guys? So judgmental. I think judgmental the only one. Uh, oh, his misogynist self. I know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> I mean, but the thing about Paul, though, like, and Romans and some of his writing, there are infinite layers to it. But like mm -hmm. him as a human being, you know, I think Carl Jung called him the great usurper because he never met Jesus ex except on the road to Damascus, right, in a vision, but then proceeded to take over the church and bring in all the rules. But I think that I think he does or somebody I thought in the New Testament there was a reference to it, but I don't recall. I think it's when they talk about men will become lovers of themselves. OK, which is a scripture to use against um, self-pleasure for <laughs> a nice word right. for the pocket. You know what I'm okay. saying? Right. I, I, it's somewhere in there that something was said, but I've never really paid Paul no attention. Now, I do like his prayers in Ephesians mm -hmm. because one of his prayers in Ephesians talking about talks about um, expanding your consciousness. And it talks about awareness and it talks about the Christ consciousness within you. I remember taking prophetic training classes as a teenager. And one of the things they taught us, even when it comes to being a prophet, was that we had to understand when someone is ministering prophetically, let's go back to the Bible. When they were writing the Bible, they still had their personal prejudices. They had their upbringing. They had what their mom and dad said to them. So this is being filtered through a being that has all types of you know what I'm saying? So to me, I don't see there's no way to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, because if you take what the Bible says, when Jesus died on the cross, the hill of Golgotha, the word Golgotha means the skull. He came to redeem man's consciousness. So I don't think there's anything you could do where you would just be like, ah, you're shut off forever. <laughs> there's right. nothing you could come back from. Um, but I and, but I think a lot of that was just fear based because even if you think about it in the church, we were also taught not to question God. But then the scripture turns around and says, come, let us reason together and test all spirits. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> where did these people? But a lot of stuff was just passed down stuff that was, you know, and then too, we had to also understand that a lot of the Christians, um, especially in our ancestors days of slavery and white supremacy and all those different things. Um, they couldn't read. Right. So they was really repeating what was taught to them. They probably didn't even really know what that scripture meant. <laughs> right. I think back in the day, they just used pictures and the person who could read explained what the pictures meant. Yeah. People didn't really know. And that was a tool for mm. continued ignorance. We even had a reader. I remember growing up, we always had a reader that would sit on the front row and the pastor would say, read. 
and thou art the God of the universe. <laughs> now, yes, yes, let me tell right there. You know, now, so I remember mm -hmm. those things. I never understood it, but it was because they couldn't read. A lot of preachers couldn't read. But one thing they could do was conjure. One thing they could do was get in touch with spirit. One thing they could do was they knew how to raise the elevation of the right. vibration mm -hmm. in the room to bring miracles, to bring right. healing. And that's the part that I love. And that's the part I tap into. Oh, yeah, that just got me really excited because it's all about that. It's about raising the vibration, opening the channel, creating a chamber, and then spirit just does the rest. He does right? the rest. Spirit does the rest. And it's really easy because even with the music, you know, if you listen to gospel music, they always start off very slow. But then they get, when they get to that crescendo, you know, it's people start standing up. And then they get, mm -hmm. they go, you know, and then it's like everybody like, huh, ah, because they're taking them from this space of low vibration through the gospel music through the temple of the symbols and in the organ. And then as they begin to, they're conjuring, they're shifting their energy, they're shifting their spirit and they're raising their vibration to the vibration of the most high. I think you even talked about that in one of the classes about mm -hmm. um, when you go into meditation, mm -hmm. that you're sitting with the high vibration consciousness of God. And mm -hmm. even if you feel like for that five minutes, you didn't get nothing done, you did do something because you became proximity to the higher consciousness energy of God. Right. And the, the energy is always going to adapt you to be more like it. So that's and pull you to right? it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a question for you. Did you hear about that pastor from Tennessee? I think his last name was Locke. And he got up on he got up on the stage and he said, There's witches in this church. We got six witches. Did you hear about this? Oh my god. Uh -uh. If you have you should you gotta Google it because I'm just but he's like, there's six witches and I know who you are. I know you're in the Bible studies. I know where you live. And he was just calling out, I don't know, maybe Wiccans or something who happen to want to also be in his church, maybe. And it just struck me as so like the worst version of Christianity today or pastors who get up on behind their pulpit and they just judge, 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 or they're unfaithful or they've got mistresses or they're just, you know, there's that scripture that talks about like, if you're going to be a priest, you have a higher sense of responsibility. Like you, you are higher, your accountability mm -hmm. raises, like you better be careful if you call yourself a priest or a pastor, because if you do anything wrong, like you have to maybe pay double. I don't know. What do you think about, <laughs> what do you think about um, Christianity today in that sense? It's just, it seems like so much hypocrisy. It's all about money. I just had a conversation with somebody about this. In the Bible, it talks about people being responsible for the lives that they touch and also for the souls that they damage. The scripture literally says their blood will be required of you. I, I, I don't take that lightly. That's why even me growing into walking in the office of a prophet, I don't take it lightly. This is a responsibility. I need to exemplify Christ. I need to exemplify love. I need to be a pure vessel. I can't be out here and caught up in sexual escapades and sent, you know, things of this nature because it's going to taint my image and my image is supposed to be Christ. So also people, your energy, don't be out here just sleeping with all these people because you're absorbing their demons. Can look, I just tell you that? Come on. All these soul ties. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Soul stains. Totally. <laughs> so tight. You be running around. Here. That's why people run around here crazy now. They got all everybody's soul I rolling know. up and down. They, uh, I know. <laughs> if people could just see like the cords, <laughs> there's so many co endless cords that you've got attached to all these people. It's just, it's a clean. And I find oh, it funny that cord. he wanted to call out witches because there's a lot of witches in the church. I know. And just but because they're a witch we... doesn't mean there's a bad thing. Not at all. That's an, it's primarily an earth religion. It's. <laughs> It's, but again, it's programming. Mm -hmm. It's television. Fear too. Prime example. What do you think of Africa? All we remember is them for 25 cents a day. And the little baby with the big belly and the fly flying by his eye. We <laughs> never <God>. see <laughs> yeah. the grand old clothes and the beautiful buildings. Like It's all about the image that they have been programmed in their consciousness. And I really feel like the Bible says, judge not lest ye be judged. So you want to judge other people? I mean, that's even in hoodoo. That's even in Wicca. Wicca says that if you throw a spell at somebody that is not justified and you're not in the right, there's a boomerang effect. What you throw at them will not only come back to you, but it comes back three times worse. Because there's laws of the universe in everything that we do. 
And I think when people realize that, that some people would shut up and stop talking so much. I wish. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't mean to say it like that, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I do. It, it's just, it's getting out of hand. Like, even now, I see on TikTok, you know, you have the African American practitioners saying, well, who do is black? Yes, we all know that. Okay, but white people shouldn't be doing it. Who are you to say that? You don't know who their ancestors are. You don't know that their, their grandmother may have been African American. The nanny that raised them might have been African. You don't know who. Our ancestors are not just always who are part of our DNA. If you were adopted into another family, your adopted family are now your ancestral bloodline and their family is considered part of your, you know what I'm saying? So all this gatekeeping. And, Do you know was, any white voodoo practitioners or hoodoo practitioners? Mm -hmm. You do? And are there and I, and all people connected? that are in the practice, they're mad that they're in the practice. Okay. <laughs> but it's like, who are you to tell people what they can't do? You know, I'm, I'm just a little Bible hoodoo boy. <laughs> but and even in the Bible, it says there's neither male nor female, Greek nor Jew. Right. We're all spirit beings. So just because I may have reincarnated in this lifetime, if you want to go there, how many lifetimes have re we reincarnated for, into a different race? I was listening to Dolores Cannon, mm -hmm. and she was talking about how if you're prejudiced or if you're racist, whoever your race is or prejudice towards, when you come back that next lifetime, you're going to be in that, <laughs> in that And she was like, so if people thought like that, there wouldn't be no racism. And I was like, she got beat with that quick. Wow. So that, okay. That's yeah. how I feel about it. I don't know who's in your DNA. Right. Our bloodline goes, it's ancient. We will never know. And if you really, I mean, if you want to be scientific about it, you know how they say the first being on earth was a woman. Because women are the only ones that can give birth. And then, you know, scientifically they say she was an African-American and she was able to pregnate herself. And that's how, you know, uh, we, life got started. You know, there's so many different theories. But so if you want to look at it from that perspective, women are gods. They are the ones who birth. Yes. They have a portal right between their legs that brings forth new life. So Did you I, know my lesbian daughters, my my daughter and her wife, I call them both my daughters, they were telling me that there's some new technology that actually allows a female to split her egg and inseminate so that yeah. she doesn't even need male mm -hmm. male semen in order to create life. I was like, whoa. I know somebody who just did that. Her and her wife, uh, she took some of the eggs of her wife and they put it in her so they can have a baby. But did they didn't they use semen though in order to do that? I don't or? know where to. I don't know how okay. that works. Well, I think there's a there's a technology coming on board that doesn't require semen. And here's the thing: I think this is how we became gray aliens because <laughs> I think gray aliens are visiting us because they've lost the they've lost the capacity to procreate. So they're having hybridized experiments with us and abductions and stuff. I think the grays mm. are just future versions of us who've messed too much with their DNA and. So we got to evolve back to what they were? I, I hope not. I mean, I <laughs> but maybe that's what they're doing. They're splitting one egg and there's no male presence. Divine masculine. I mean, that's a thing. Divine masculine and divine feminine. You know, that divine masculine, divine feminine thing. I know there's polarity in everything. Yes. But even like when Christians want to be so hard about sexuality and things of that nature, I said, did you really read Genesis? Because in Genesis, it said that he created him male and female. He created him. I, I do believe in the polarity of both light and dark, up and down. You know, we are, even when they talk about, you know, they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's how man became both dualistic nature and knowing good and evil. But at the same time, if God created everything and it was all good, we look at the Bible, you would say, well, what Judas did when he told them where Jesus was and had him set up, that was considered evil. But was it evil? Because he was supposed to die on the cross anyway. Did it all work out for our good? According to the scriptures, how it says all things work together for the good, good, God, God consciousness. I just believe that we need to honor everybody where they at, male, female, masculine. Like I said, I'm more understanding God of mother God as well. Because I read in the Bible as a kid, he'll be a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless. And it always got me to thinking, well, how could God just be a man <laughs> if he can be a mother to the motherless? And then when you look at the attributes of the Holy Spirit, the nurturing attributes of the Holy Spirit is what a mother does. Nurtures, protects, guides, leads. That's everything that the mother energy does. 
So, you know, yeah. as I listen to you, Berwin, I think to myself, you're, you're presenting as all the way Christian. <laughs> so Is I'm it? wondering, well, I mean, <laughs> but like I, me too, though, like when I start getting deep into my spirituality, like I'm talking about scripture as well, and I'm using it as, mm-hmm. you know, rep, like references. But so for you, where does the hoodoo intersect show up like in what practices that you do and in what prayers that you like do you do spell work Mm -hmm. that's can we can you talk a little bit about your day-to-day life as a hoodoo christian so in the morning i play gospel music but it's different now because i used to just think it was just the holy ghost now when i do it in consciousness i'm understanding that i'm praising god raising my vibration but i'm also in the presence of my ancestors when I clean my home, I use Florida water, I use sea salt, I use Lysol, and then I pray Psalms 23 over the water. And I put my hands in there. You know, salt is a cleanser. It removes negative energy. Of course, everybody knows about Florida water. And um, Lysol as well is another cleansing agent that um, a lot of the ancestors use to um, remove negative energy. When it comes to money work, I have... You, oh, you probably can't see it, but I got all my jars back here. Like this is my Abre Camino. This is you're, a road you're... opener. What is that called? Abre Camino. I don't know what that. What does that word mean? <sighs> road opener. Okay. Okay. It open roads, so you could take this, and you could use another essential oil. I use a lot of times is frankincense and myrrh because I like something holy in it. Lemongrass breaks up negative energy, and then I just get my candle. And I poke holes in it and I get my whatever oil I'm going to use. Sometimes I use just my regular blessed oil. We at Three Hoodoo Sisters, we got our own oils. I actually made these. So this one is a high John oil. So this is good for like court cases, victory work. So um, what do you do with the oil? Do you put it in a diffuser? Do you put it on your third mm-hmm. eye? Like what are you doing with the oil? You can use it how you want. You can use it as a spiritual bath. What I do is like if I have something, like if I'm going to a meeting or something, I will rub some of my hands. I rub it on the bottom of my feet. So everywhere I walk, I'm walking in victory. Oh, I love that. Okay. And like, this is my favorite one. This is a love oil that we make. Mm -hmm. So this has a lot of roses in it. Love herbs. Of course, you know, the essential oil. uh, I love lavender. Now for fast money work, you can use- Give uh, us some fast money. (laughs) Okay, I'm gonna give this to you slow. You can use 14 drops of cinnamon oil, 21 drops of hyssop oil, seven drops of nutmeg, and seven drops of honeysuckle oil. Is the nutmeg the spice or is it the oil? Is there a nutmeg oil? Oh, it's oil. Okay. Now, if you want, you can also get the honeysuckle because honeysuckle also comes like in a plant form. Mm hmm. It smells so good. Yeah. Yeah. I, we use that a lot for because that's a drawing herb. So it could draw in money, it can draw in love. It could draw in peace. Like I'm, I'm in the process now of making an oil. I'm going to give out the disclaimer. I'm, I'm making my first oil and it's going to be called Bel Perizem. Okay. <laughs> what, it, what does that mean? In the Bible, it's called Bel Perizem is God of the breakthrough. Okay. And Spirit just gave it to me a couple of weeks ago. I heard that message preached 30 years ago. And the man, he was this tall white guy. He was like, like Clark Kent, like, and he called the... Uh, of the breakthrough bell terrorism. And he was just so animated and it just stuck with me all these years. And I was standing there waiting to go do something. And I heard bell terrorism. I was like, I remember that. And I got my Bible and I started looking. I was like, the spirit was like, this is going to be your first oil because it's about breakthroughs. It's about breakthroughs for healing, breakthroughs for love, breakthroughs for peace, just breakthrough in generational you know, curses being broken. I'm, I'm waiting as they give me the herbs and stuff to use. But that's what hoodoo is about. It's about opening your channels through your ancestors, having this relationship with God and allowing them to start speaking to you. They will give you whatever recipes they had. They'll start intuitively coming to you. So like with the fast money, you can make the oil, get a green candle, represents money. If you want an all-purpose, of course, candle is white. Okay, so if you can't get a green or you can't get a different color, just use white. Use white. I uh, sat under um, a bishop named Dr. Keone and one of the most powerful things he said about hoodoo and all the ATRs, he said, at the end of the day, it's not about the fetishes and the things that you use. It's about the intention and the heart. So even if you can't find a green candle, even if you can't find the herb, you could take the scripture, you could take a, a verse. Like my favorite one is, um, is in Deuteronomy. He gives me power to get wealth. 
You can take that scripture and just write it out and you can put it on your mirror. And every day you affirm, <laughs> you affirm, he gives, he gives me power to get wealth. Okay. That's what hoodoo is about. It's not really just about the products. It's about the intention and it's about call upon the powers that be that walk with you. Everybody has ancestors. Everybody has spirits that walk with them that will start giving them the wisdom, giving them the creative ideas. But it's about us spending time being quiet and shutting our mouths and getting on social media. All right. Guilty. <laughs> to get it. So with the f fast money, you could either rub it on your body. I put some in my lotions. I put, I even um, put some in my body washes and that's how hoodoo is for me. It's not about just me trying to make an oil to go out there and say, Hey, buy my oil. It's about me healing me, me elevating me, me prospering in my personal life. And now if I end up making stuff and creating stuff that will help other people, my intention for doing it is not because I'm out here to be a marketer and make money. My intention is because it healed me to help me. So I want to give this to somebody else so that it can help them on their path and their journey. And that's what hoodoo is all about. It's about elevation. It's about healing. And it's about speaking life. It just happens to be using the Bible. Like I said, you can use the Torah. You can use the Quran. Whatever your faith is, whatever your traditional practice is, you can use that. And it's hoodoo. Well, when you get your oil together, you're going to have to let me know when you're ready to sell it to people. Because I think I have a few people who would probably want to. Why? Well, because you also you strike me as having the right intention. Like your intention is to, if you're going to give this oil to someone else, it's so that they can have the same healing experience that right. you have using that oil. And so that's that means it's coming from a really powerful and good place. So let me know. I got Let's... one more for you. Oh, it's called okay. the Guardian Angel Oil. Oh, okay. Tell me about this. What? Okay. okay. So and what does this do? So it just protects us or? It protects, it calls them in. So if you want to rub it on your hands in your prayer time, if you want to rub it around your house, I anoint my house with my blessed oil and I call upon God. I call upon the Holy Spirit. I use the scripture of Genesis. I ask the Holy Spirit to breathe over my home. You remember in the scripture when he said that the um, spirit of God breathed upon the face of the waters in the deep and there then there was light. So even in that, that's conjuring, that's calling on spirit. Even if you have a situation, if you have um, an argument with somebody and you want to know the truth about what really happened, you could pray and ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask you to breathe over the situation and bring light. That's conjuring. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's, yes, that's, I do. And, this, and when, they, now when the lights come on, <laughs> don't be mad. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, but with the gar um, with the guardian angel oil, like I said, you could use it in your prayer time. You could use it in your meditation time. You can anoint your car with it. I anoint the bottom of the soles of my feet when I leave the house. You know, that I walk in victory, that I walk in healing, that I walk in peace. And it's just good to do because sometimes people out there who do hoodoo or different other traditional things, throw stuff on the ground or might try to throw something in your front yard. So, you know, as you walking out with this high giant oil, victory, you're going to walk right over it and break whatever they was trying to, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's how, for me, that's how I implement hoodoo in my personal everyday life. I take baths in my oils. I put them in my lotions. Like sometimes when I'm feeling like I need to build my self-confidence, I use our self-love oil. I put it in my lotion. I put some in my body wash. And then afterwards, I always, and people, I wonder if they ever notice on the bus, but I always anoint my third eye, <laughs> my pineal gland, you know, which is in the Bible as well. When Jacob wrestled with himself, the place where he wrestled with God was called pineal. Yep. Yep. Bible. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, with the guardian angel, you can anoint your car. You can anoint your children before they go to school. Because I told you my mom got married, right? Yes, you did. Yeah, okay. I saw the pictures. They were great. Yeah. So, like, um, I'm very protective of my mom. So, I even anointed her house before I left. <laughs> like, I anointed, I anointed her wigs. I was anointing everything. Like, we going to cover her. Eat, cover Head her. to toe. <laughs> and you know what? There's another thing that's in the church that's hoodoo, pleading the blood of Jesus. Right. Getting covered in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Getting or head, covered in the blood. Hedge of protection too. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It goes back to when the deaf spirit was coming through, killing the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And they said, if you strike the doorpost with blood, the deaf spirit will pass over. So if I'm praying for somebody and they may be sick in the hospital, I'm going to conjure up and I'm going to call the power, the power of the blood because it's speaking the representation with my tongue. It's like the hyssop that was wiped over the doorpost. But the uh, ingredients for the guardian angel oil is um, a half an ounce of olive oil, seven drops of coconut oil, three drops of nutmeg oil, two drops of cinnamon oil, 
and one drop of peppermint oil. Now, can you also buy these oils from Three Hoodoo anyway. Sisters? Oh, okay. All right. At threehoodoosisters.com, we got everything from love, uncrossing, hygiene. What's an uncrossing? Talk to me like I'm through with um, So uncrossing is when someone has sent some work your way. Okay. Negative, and you would use uncrossing to uncross it and unhex yourself. Okay. We also... <laughs> do I need some of that? You know, the thing about being on YouTube, though, or being out in front of people in the public eye, I think people are sending you stuff through the cords all mm -hmm. the time. So I'm mm -hmm. constantly like, mm -hmm. Neo, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, mm -hmm. I'm trying to cut those cords. So uncrossing. Well, I remember we, I remember we talked about that last time, mm -hmm. yes. but you bought something that was very powerful that evil eye thing you had the blue one. yes the evil eye thing yes mm -hmm. yeah we <laughs> actually have two in our store mm -hmm. there's actually a scripture for that for the evil eye yeah and it's talking about sending the evil back i'm gonna find it though and i'm gonna send it to you but when i okay. read the scripture i was just like oh my god i gotta use this in my <laughs> evil eye work because <laughs> it spoke right to my soul it was like oh sha -na 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 -na. <laughs> But that's how that's how hoodoo works. It's you know you'll come across scriptures like I was just reading in Psalms the other day because you know I'm a Psalms baby, and it was a scripture I was reading Psalms 91 and I just kind of glanced over to Psalms 94 and it says Lord God to whom vengeance belongs let your glory shine out arise and judge the earth sentence the proud of the penalties to the penalties that they deserve Lord how long shall the wicked be allowed to triumph and exalt how do I say this without us getting shut down? Um, well, y'all know what's going on in the earth in right. another country. Right. So someone over there could use this mm -hmm. to bring victory with all that, you know, what's <laughs> going have on. You, have, you been, have you been doing some of that? Like, have you been involved in just sending the energy yeah. or binding with what's going on in Russia and Ukraine? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's nonsense. It and especially because it's affecting our gas prices. Oh my gosh, yes it is. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, so like with the intuitive or the magical arts, you have the light and the dark. And with witches, you can have a, you know, a white witch and a dark witch. I don't know what you'd call that. But in hoodoo, do you have, <laughs> you're giving me that, like the part of the religion that is just for kind of the more negative? Mm -hmm. It's called left hand work. <laughs> left hand work, okay. And but once again, like I was talking about with the Wicca, left hand work has to be justified. If it's not justified, you get your ass whooped because it's gonna come back on you. And it'll come back to the practitioner or the person who the, asked practitioner, the practitioner or the person who asked the practitioner. That's why even with my like with my um my boss that I assist, she divines before she does work because she needs to make sure. Even though you said, "Oh, this person did me wrong," we'll go and then. Pull out them baby, them cars, baby, and mm -hmm. we'll be like, uh, they lying. <laughs> they ain't telling the truth. We ain't touching this because it'll come back to you as well. A young man that I know named uh Cosmic New Age, he talked about doing work uh justified and not from a place of revenge. This is an example. Say you have a friend and her husband is beating on her. She comes to you and wants you to do some work. She's afraid to leave. Da, 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 da. You would do work. But you would do it with a clause where there's a space for him to repent. Okay. So you would do work, jack his life up, spirit. Get him, get him. Mm -hmm. But if he repents and changes ways, he's free. Okay. So he's got an out. He's had, yeah. If he gets out. conscious. Okay. Right. So you want to do work that's justified. You don't want to just be out here, which is why I think a lot of times we learn things at certain places of our life. I'm at a healed place now, but if you probably would have taught me some hoodoo stuff probably 30 years ago, I would have been jacking people up just because they made me mad. <laughs> right. And I had a bad temper, you know, so I'm at a place now where I'm all love and light and I'll forgive you, you know, I might fight you if you keep trying me, but, you know, I've got this more balance. Um, so you have to understand, though, in everything, there is light and dark. So even with him calling out those witches, who's to say there probably was some witches there, but don't mm -hmm. mean that they were dark. Don't mean that they was there to even disturb the service. And really, to be honest, how did you discern it, sir? Light begets light. Well, I mean, so we got some witches in the pulpit and they know they're doing it from the dark way because that's how they're making their money. hundred percent. I believe that to be true. Yeah, so has a light 
uh, excuse me, a left path practitioner ever gone up against a right path practitioner or whatever uh, the the light? Who well, no, we, we do, do both. Each, each okay. practitioner can do both. Oh, okay. So, oh, all right. So you don't have just practitioners doing mm -hmm. one kind of thing. Got mm -hmm. it, got it, got it. Okay. You would go to somebody for love and then you could go to them and say, hey, he beating on me. And then mm -hmm. the same person that can give you a love potion, give you a potion and slap him aside the head. <laughs> <laughs> Is <laughs> there, are they both equally as powerful? Yeah. So what if you had a practitioner doing left path and you had a practitioner doing the right path or whatever it's called, and they're going up against each other? Is it based on the practitioner and the Based on power? the justification. Okay. Okay. Once again, the laws of the universe, if you're not right, the universe is going to slap and spank you behind. Okay. That's so interesting. I'm learning so, so that, much today. That's why even like I was saying last time, you know, with the people that's throwing negative stuff at you, they're going to have to take account for that because you're sending it with ill intention for the wrong reason. Crystal ain't bothering you. And if they I'm listening to this to. broadcast, I'm letting you know now. You need to back off because all the angels of light that walk with her are going to jack you up. Leave people alone. You don't know who walks with who and who people know that walks with them. I know some practitioners right now that are just waiting for some folks to go wrong. All I got to do is give them a phone call. They lighting candles and slapping oil. Your whole life going to be messed up. Her intention is to shed light and love. And with you carrying that intention, spirit of God is not going to allow what they're trying to send to you even affect you. It may okay. hit you. Right. You may feel it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, your angels are going to protect you and guide you because your intentions are pure and you're not bothering nobody. And the work is being sent unjustified. So okay. they need that to understand. I, this is coming from Prophet BK's mouth. Back off if you know what's good for you. Because you're going to bring a whole principalities and powers down on your head that you don't want. Leave people alone. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you know, I feel I did some work around it and all of my stuff is just intuitive. But I did some work around cutting cords and removing the oculus or the eye that the person had in my space that they were probably using to enter into my stuff. And I just did a lot of work around it. And since then, I felt absolutely nothing, like no activity, no problems. And um the thing about being a sensitive person is you can feel when somebody's got their eye on you, their mm -hmm. consciousness on you, or a cord trying to attach. Mm -hmm. So I will not be caught off guard. That's yeah. for sure. And you got folks like me. Yeah, call me, text me. I know. Don't make me call him. <laughs> do not make and me I, do I, got a, I got a whole tribe. <laughs> I got a whole hoodoo family. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Yeah, let's just all try and be in the light. It's 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 the best way to do it. To be sometimes in the light. when people don't act right, we know how to well, go into that dark side. And yeah. I got some ancestors, baby, that's waiting to get out the gate. <laughs> I'm telling people, <laughs> I'm sweet, I'm loving, I'm all about God. Hallelujah. Call on the angels. But if you bother me, I know <laughs> right. they back there waiting. <laughs> <laughs> my, my boss, she always laughs at me because we had took a trip one time. And so she looked at me at dinner and she's like, do you realize like how you really are? And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, like you wake up in the morning, you light your incense, you praying, you praise the God, you listen to your gospel music. She said, but by one o'clock, if somebody do something wrong, you're like, I'll <laughs> knock your head off. And I was like, am I really? And I really thought about it. I was like, you know what? I just have always had that balance. Mm -hmm. But I had some good leaders when I was growing up that understood I'm saved, I love God, but I would knock your head off because the battle sometimes is not the Lord's, it's mine. Right. <laughs> right. This so has I been had. such a fun conversation. Is there anything else you wanted to add um, about anything that if I missed anything, because I could just sit here and talk with you for like forever and talk about all the things. Cause I really, I think most people just don't get it. They just don't understand. And mm -mm. I'm so fascinated by all of it. Well, you might have to come back if something shifts and changes or if I have more questions, I might have to bring what, you know, I'm always, look, Crystal Ann Compton I is love the you. one. I the love one. you. I, I remember two, when I we first started talking you. and you were just like, I love you. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> what happened? I she, meant it. <laughs> she knew me, how did she know me? Like, I, I, you knew my name and everything. And I was mm -hmm. like, how did this lady know me? Like, mm -hmm. I've been watching her for years on YouTube mm -hmm. and she knows me. Mm -hmm. And then here we are talking on them. Look, I'm telling y'all, there is nothing that is that you're called to do that spirit will not bring you around the path of people that you're supposed to be around. Right. It happens they, naturally. It naturally, because we I didn't try to find you. I just accidentally found I somehow found your Facebook group some way. 
Mm-hmm. I think I even found your Facebook page, and I was just—I just sent the message. I, I mean, I just sent the request, and I didn't even think he was going to accept it because you know you got thousands of followers. And then <laughs> look at where we are today. I know, but it was we—we but we were supposed to cross each other's paths. Well, Berwyn, tell people or Prophet BK, tell people how they can find you, where they can find you, if they want to reach out for a reading because you're very talented, intuitive, and you got a lot going on. So, how can they contact you? <laughs> My Gmail is sonoftheharvest at gmail.com. If you're in Atlanta or the surrounding areas, you can find me at threehootersisters.com. If you go to the website, you can find the address to the store. I actually am there. Um, I do face-to-face sessions on Thursdays. You're on or Instagram wanna, too, right? Are you yeah, on under Berwyn Kemp. Yeah, Instagram and Facebook is Berwyn Kemp. Do you do, so you do Zoom readings, as I know you mentioned that at the top of it. So if somebody went to your Instagram, looked at Berwyn Kemp, and I'll keep all of these links in the description so you can definitely find him. They can just reach reach out to you on Instagram as well, or Mm -hmm. sonoftheharvest at At Mm gmail.com. Okay. And of course, we got all the products at the store, threehootersisters.com. So, and if you want to purchase something or you're in the area and you want to stop by and, you know, look at the products and we can explain everything to you, how to use them. All that good stuff, you know, we give you like we have a new one now called Enchantment, which is a beautiful woman's body spray. And we actually have the seduction spray set, which is mm-hmm. sweetest fruit to sweeten and to bring the person in. And then mm-hmm. you got the enchantment to enchant them while they're there. Oh, I love it. So do you ship? Do, yeah. Do the, oh, do you ship? Okay, awesome. So we can visit the site and check it out. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Berwyn. This is a wonderful conversation. I love spending time with you anytime I can. Hopefully you'll come back. We'll have other things to talk about. But until then, Berwyn and everyone else, never forget, we've got nothing but love for you. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye, everybody.